to be recognized by the Urban Land Institute for the Visionary Leadership in Land Use Award is an incredible accomplishment, one that takes a lifetime to achieve. Larry is an amazing embodiment of what ULI has been advocating for years, a coherent development of not only just one building and another building, but an urban area and with wonderful design. So I think he's a perfect exemplar of what ULI stands for. He's a guy who has spent his whole career, his whole lifetime of 87 years, working to achieve this type of accomplishment. Larry certainly deserves this honor because he is incontestably the master builder of New York City. Larry started from very humble beginnings. He was an office broker with his father and then decided that they should own office buildings and started investing in properties in New York City. It was in the early 80s that he was uh, transformational in taking certain neighborhoods and changing them um, by the properties he bought and how he operated them or what he built. And then the game changer. Larry was able to purchase the World Trade Center in 2001. It's well known now that Larry won the bid and there was much rejoicing um, and he began to tackle the issues attendant to the old World Trade Center. And then six weeks later, 9-11 came. All of us remember 9-11, and it's a day that we'll never forget, but part of my 9-11 memory is happening upon uh, Larry. Um, I think we are on First Avenue about six o'clock that night. He and uh, Jeff Wharton were walking together, and I came up to him, um, and I was looking to say something positive, and I couldn't get any words out at all. I simply began to cry. And he put his arms around me and said, sweetheart, we're going to rebuild. Certainly after 9-11, uh, there are people like him who could have walked away. And I don't think anybody would have blamed him. Uh, but that's not what he did. He doubled down his dedication and passion to rebuilding here what that meant symbolically, but what it meant uh, tangibly for the city. Um, he has never wavered in that commitment and has created something really incredible here. What Larry has done down here in Lower Manhattan is a tremendous accomplishment. Um, he is not a government, he is a, an individual, and he's created a whole neighborhood. In 2005, I began working with Larry, and my earliest memory is walking into the room where all the architects who were gonna work on the World Trade Center, all of their teams were housed. And you could see the energy they were sparking off one another. And I thought to myself, where did Larry get this idea? And what I've come to know about him is, Larry is a man of ongoing ideas and endless growth. And though he had never done anything of the scale before, he had a bigger thought, he had bigger ambition. And typical Larry, he figured out how to bring something brand new to the endeavor. So he surprised the world, literally, by uh, building after building, um, uh, rebuilding this neighborhood and using top architects. He made a neighborhood again. The entire Lower Manhattan community has really changed so dramatically in the last five, ten years since these buildings have opened. And you see now 1,200 restaurants and shops, 62,000 people live here. We're back to our pre-9-11 employment numbers for the first time ever. So what's happened here has really served as an anchor to revitalize the entire neighborhood. Larry Silverstein's legacy will obviously be the World Trade Center, but it goes so much further beyond that. He's incredibly philanthropic, and he is a mentor to so many people in the industry, young and old. Larry founded the Real Estate Institute at NYU in 1967, and at the time it was an idea really ahead of its time. I think what we've seen since then is that a very small cohort of working professionals in New York City has grown into the largest academic real estate program in the world. And all of our students owe a deep debt of gratitude uh, to Larry's founding Shack Institute. I look at Larry's involvement with all the different art forms, uh, graffiti art, street art, uh, you just have to realize, you know, Larry's from Brooklyn and he's experienced this city uh, over many, many decades. 
and has learned to appreciate the texture of the city. And of course, he picked up early on on the energy and the, the communication that the, the people were doing through these art forms. And he's embraced it and has incorporated it into some of the public spaces that uh, he makes available in his buildings. Why is Larry so philanthropic? It's who he is. I think he understands the importance of giving back to the community. So I'll never forget the day that I was accepted to NYU School of Medicine as a Silverstein Scholar. It changed my life to be accepted to NYU, not only which is a fantastic school in the city that I love, but also to be told that um, I wouldn't have to graduate with any debt was really life-changing. I think one of the things that people find most surprising about, about Larry is that we know that he's a tycoon, but he's really, at core, a total family guy. I always joke that if you want to get out of anything with Larry, you say, oh, you know, I have to take my child or my grandchild to do such and such, I can't make it. And Larry's like, family first, go right ahead with that. My grandfather treats everyone like his family. He doesn't treat anyone as if, as if he's their boss. He doesn't treat anyone like he's above them. I believe the secret to Mr. Silverstein's success is that, you know, he's uh, respectful to everyone. When he comes down the hall, he speaks to everyone. Good morning, how you doing? How, how is everyone today? So it makes everyone feel very comfortable being in the company that you can actually have an in to speak to the chairman. He is an icon. And so um, this, this certainly is a, an honor that he deserves. Surrounding yourself with the, the right people makes all the difference in the world. And when I say right people, I'm talking about people of talent, people of capacity, people of comprehension, people with experience, uh, people with determination, uh, people with creativity. Um, it should all come together. And there's nothing more important um, than, than being able to work with the brightest and the best. I think one of the most valuable lessons <laughs> I've learned, especially from my exposure at rebuilding the trade center, is never give up. <laughs> Whatever you do, go at it with a passion um, and get it done. And the last piece of advice uh, I can give is uh, when you're faced with a, a decision that you have to make about whether or not uh, something is appropriate, how would you feel if what you're about to do finds its way to the front pages of the New York Times. Would you be embarrassed by it or would you feel totally appropriate by it? And if you feel totally comfortable and confident in what you're about to do, then do it. If you have any reservation, however, under that circumstance, my recommendation is don't do it. That's my New York Times test. The Visionary Leadership in Land Use Award uh, is something that I'm proud of. Uh, it's prestigious, uh, it uh, recognizes uh, accomplishment, um, and, and I feel highly privileged to be the recipient of it. So uh, to uh, the Urban Land Institute, I thank you, and I thank you very sincerely. Larry, my heartfelt congratulations on this incredible achievement. You continue to be my mentor and my friend, my chairman, and I am privileged every day to work with you, and there's no better recipient of this award. Larry, congratulations on this incredibly well-deserved honor for your contributions to the city, uh, to the country, to the world, uh, and all of the work that you do to support us. You've done so much for New York, and you deserve to be honored. Um, you have been one of the great city builders of our time. Congratulations, Larry, and thank you for everything you've done for students like me. Thank you, Larry, for rebuilding, for renewing, and for your commitment to this neighborhood and to the World Trade Center site. Congratulations on this honor. I just want to thank you for all that you've done for the city, for the world. We appreciate you, and we just love you. Congratulations on your honor. You've done so many amazing things, and I love you so much. You've given so much to this city. You've given it your heart and soul, and it shows. You've built something that is tremendous and it's not going to be forgotten. Thank you for all you've done for New York, 
for our country and for those of us who had the privilege to work with you.